All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the PhD qualifying exam or the comprehensive exam. Both what is it and how do you study for it? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I'm a professor based in Arizona. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to grad school. If you find my videos helpful, a subscribe to the channel would be really great. All right, so the PhD qualifying exam, what is this thing? It's ubiquitous across a lot of different disciplines, but I can only speak to my experience in geosciences and in STEM generally. So I'm not 100% sure how consistent the format is from discipline to discipline. So this is an exam that you're taking either at the end of your second year in your fourth semester or at the beginning of your third year in your fifth semester. Not only do the formats vary from discipline to discipline, but they also vary from university to university. There's two main formats to this thing. There's a written component and then there's an oral component. The formats of the written component can also vary. I feel like I'm a broken record on this already. So for the written component, you can either have actual written questions that you have to fill out in a certain amount of time and then return to your committee members. Or you can have a paper that you've written by the time you get to, say, your fifth semester. Or you can have a proposal, which then you're giving to your committee members, which outlines and diagrams what you're doing during your PhD and sort of how far you've come along the way so far and then what you still have to complete. After you complete the written portion, you'll sit down with all of your committee members at once and do the oral portion. For the oral part, there's usually a 30 minute presentation. This is a little bit about your background, what courses you've taken prior to grad school, what courses you've taken in grad school, and then a certain amount of slides about the research that you've done so far, and then probably a few slides about the research you plan to do next. After you finish that oral presentation, there's initial questions, which are about the presentation you just gave and about the specific research that you've done up to this point. After that, the questions start to expand to pretty much anything in your field, although they're still pretty much related to the research project that you're working on. Where I'm at, the total oral portion of this exam needs to be between two and three hours in length. We hold these exams in a conference room with a whiteboard because we typically ask you to diagram questions out on the whiteboard during your exam. The oral component is really what I'm referring to when I say exam, because a lot of departments, especially in my discipline, are moving away from having these written questions that you turn in ahead of time, and instead transitioning to either you write a journal article or paper, or you write some sort of proposal about your PhD. So there's roughly two types of questions that you're going to see during this exam. The first type of question is really designed to find the limit of your current knowledge. So we're going to ask questions about down a specific line of thought, and if it seems like you're answering these questions relatively easy and you know a lot in this area, we're going to move into an adjacent area to see how well you know a slightly different topic. And we're trying to figure out how far can we ask questions before we start to find the limit of what you know. So these types of questions are most directly related to your research because at this point you're starting to become the prominent expert in what you're actually doing. You're starting to transition from my advisor probably knows more than I do about what I'm doing to I'm starting to know more about my research topic than my advisor. And so we wanna know that you are actually an expert in what you're talking about. So we wanna ask questions about the methods that you're using. We wanna ask questions about the data sets that you're using. We're going to ask questions on things that are side related to your research project, but still highly relevant. The second type of question you're gonna see is one that's broad enough to let you show how you'd work through a problem or how you would reason through a problem. These often have more than one quote unquote correct answer because you can direct where the conversation is going. So if there's an area that you're more comfortable talking about, you can kind of steer the conversation in that direction and then talk about how this problem is related to your work and how it impacts it and how it's really uh, something that you need to take into account. I hope you can see generally how these questions are related to how broadly you know the scientific literature and how well you know, say, subdisciplines that are adjacent to the one that you're working in. So in my department, at least, the students who don't do well in this exam are generally the ones who don't take it seriously and they don't devote enough time to actually studying for this exam. So it kind of leads to the big question, well, how do you actually study for this exam? Okay, step one is probably a little obvious. Presumably you've had a lot of graduate classes and so you have a lot of material from those classes and you've taken classes from your committee members. So you can study all of the material from those classes and be familiar with it before your exam. Absolutely the most important thing that I'm gonna say in this as advice is that you should tailor your studying to the format of your exam. You should find other students in your department who are taking this exam around the same time period and you should form a study group with them roughly six to 12 months before the exam. After that, you meet up with them either every week or every other week for about an hour 
and you take turns asking each other questions while you're standing on a whiteboard. You get practice answering questions in front of a group, you get practice answering questions with markers in your hand at a whiteboard, and you get practice thinking of what are the important questions that I need to be studying. If you do this often enough, you can remove a lot of the anxiety that comes from being in that situation under pressure. Maybe one week you need a break and you just have a brainstorming session about what constitutes a good question. Maybe other weeks you're taking turns and this week it's so-and-so's turn and this week it's my turn. Or maybe you just wanna take 10 minute go of it and see how you do. There's a ton of variation that you could do with this depending on whether your schedule is busy this week or chill this week. All right, third tip, you should sit down with your committee members and talk to them about the upcoming exam. You can actually just ask them what they're going to ask you on the exam if you phrase it in the right way. You can say something like, I was hoping you could give me some guidance on what to expect during this exam, such as what topics do you think are most relevant to my own work? When I meet with students, I tell them that I usually draw questions from where their research intersects with the material in my own classes. And I'm usually willing to give them one or two example questions to sort of illustrate this. All right, this final tip is really important, but I put it forth because it's kind of really challenging to implement. Part of this exam is really about assessing how widely you've read the literature in both your own field and adjacent fields. And it's something that you need to do in order to be able to put your work in context. And the only really way that you can do this is by reading a lot of papers. And so that's why this part of the preparation really needs to start as soon as possible, at least perhaps a year before your exam. You need to be reading a high volume of papers by the time that you get to this exam in order to have a really uh, broad breadth of knowledge, but also really depth in your specific area. The next video that I wanna do is actually about how you read a paper and how you can get into reading a high volume of papers. Uh, that is assuming if I can ever speed up my editing process to release something faster than every other week. So that's the advice I'd give to students as they're coming up on their qualifying exam. If there are other tips that you've come across or like study suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'd love to read them. And if you have other suggestions on what videos I should do in the future, I'd love to see those too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. What am I doing with my hands? What do I do with my hands? I'm Chris, I'm a professor based in Arizona and I don't have anything that I didn't think beyond that. My name is Chris, I'm a professor. I'm a professor. All right, so the PhD qualifying exam. What is it? What is it? Why do I keep making that face? The oral part is really what I'm referring to when I say exam, because a lot of departments, at least in my discipline, are moving 